Alice Cooper is starting his uh, nationwide tour on June 19th in Anaheim uh, Stadium. And any of you who have seen an Alice Cooper concert knows that it's, it's really an experience. It is some kind of happening. And he's had a lot of strange things on stage with him at one time or another. But it seems that he wanted a particular artist to join him on this tour. And last week, we picked up a copy of the Daily Variety, which is the trade, one of the trade papers here in Los Angeles. It says, open audition. Travel, excitement, meet new friends. Alice Cooper wants you. Alice Cooper is looking for a snake to perform in his act. No prior acting, singing, or dancing experience necessary. Any species of snake can apply regardless of sex, nationality, or religious persuasion. Employee benefits include a liberal pension arrangement, free hospitalization, profit sharing, Christmas bonuses, and an occasional human sacrifice if you are the right reptile. Uh. So forth, and it says uh, limit recitations to three minutes. Aspirants must bring resumes, glossies, and proof that he or she is not venomous. We insist on the latter. Well, I understand that Alice found his uh, winner at the snake auditions yesterday, and I believe that's it sitting in it's front in of the bag, me. right there. Would you welcome <laughs> Alice Cooper? Alice! <laughs> I cracked up when I saw the ad last week. That's yeah, a funny well, idea. No. Showbiz. Showbiz. Yeah. Did agents show up? Any of the snakes have agents? And... <laughs> they did. <laughs> well, it wouldn't yes, surprise me out here in this crazy. So in the bag you have, uh, how many snakes did you have to audition? Well, we went to about 100 snakes. And, uh, you know, we went through bathing suit okay, contests. Wait, I didn't know we had some pictures here. Oh, we do? Oh, yeah. All right. We had... this, this guy here was a big guy. Good yeah. heavens, that's a bow constrictor, isn't it? Yeah, that's an enormous one, though. That's, that's too big for me. Would this you believe that that was... many people would show up, Alice? I mean, with the... Yeah. I yeah. guess in Hollywood, yeah. <laughs> It doesn't bother. Hollywood Boulevard, you know, there's enough snakes. <laughs> <laughs> These are crazy. That one there, that lady there... Yeah? ...is, uh... Ooh. Now, did most of them have these as pets? Uh... <laughs> yeah, they were mostly pets, well, but I, mean, I don't know what her problem they? was right there. That's a lot of snakes. That's ten. She had ten snakes on her. Goodness, this looks like another boa constrictor. Yeah. They mostly were. Pythons are a little bit more gamey, you know. I mean, they'll strike. Oh, I see. You didn't want a snake no, that would, would attack a, you, of course. During... I'm a little guy. Look at kids. Now, here's a kid. You know, most people don't like reptiles or have a fear of snakes. But kids, generally, don't have any fear whatsoever, right? Because that, they have snake, to... that snake is bigger than that kid. Yeah. It really is. That was the one that was the, probably the best snake in the whole show. You have to learn that fear, I guess, of yeah. uh, snakes. And no, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the true story about We'll talk about in a moment. But the, what they'll do is snakes are, are uh, they don't have any hearing. So they can't, like, hear anything loud. They have, like, an adrenaline thing. And uh, they smell adrenaline when you exude adrenaline in is your body. Is why they flick the tongue all the time? Is yeah. that picking up? Yeah, and they pick up a fear smell. And so, like, I, I could pick up, you could pick up. Right. Well, you can right now. Oh, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Now, tell well, me a little about the snake first, Alice. This is now. a wonderful little guy here. And, sure. Uh, this is the one that actually was the best snake. Remember Eve saying that to Adam? It was a wonderful <laughs> little guy. <laughs> My last snake was named Eva Marie Snake. Really? Eva, yeah. Marie, Marie, Eva Marie Snake? Yeah. This is a oh. good one right here. See, now most people think uh, you shouldn't go, oh, they think that snakes are slimy. They are not. No, they're not. They're very clean. I like snakes myself. I come from the Midwest. Yeah, and this they don't, one they don't, bother bother, don't bother me at all. Yeah. This, this is a... Uh... I'm totally surprised he's doing this. <laughs> it's a harmless snake, isn't it? It is. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> Fine time to ask. <laughs> I should have asked that question prior to picking up this. This is, uh, this is one of the nicest, cleanest. I mean, look at this. It's, it's sparkling. No, there's no, they're, not, they're not slimy. They're dry. They're clean. But boy, can you feel the power. Yeah. He's wrapped yeah. himself around. Around the desk. Around the desk. <laughs> Around the side of the <laughs> he's, he's hooked myself. On Don't the let him get any place else down there. He's on the microphone. He's on the mic. He hooked himself around All the right, microphone. All right, well, I'll get him out of there. He wants to guest host on Monday. Yes. <laughs> Did you see that? Well, this one really is not that safe. <laughs> mm. yeah, Snake's yeah. no trooper. <laughs> He's hooked onto the microphone cord and he won't let go. Yes. Okay, listen, let's talk to him. You... Hey, big fella. Hey, baby, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he actually is hooked onto the microphone. He has wrapped his body, his tail. I wish you could see this. Can you get a camera around here? Y yeah, he's... <laughs> he's wrapped his tail he's around He's just nervous, that's the all. Microphone there we cord. go, there we go. Yeah, we're out now. No, wait, we're not out. You wouldn't <laughs> believe the strength. 
of this yeah. uh, reptile. What kind of a snake is this? This is a boa. This is a boa. This is actually not a... <laughs> he actually did a take. He well, like, yeah, the snake, a double snake take. Mm. <laughs> double tongue take. Well, no. He's, oh, he's all right, really. He's this this, is going, this going one on just tour with you? Yeah, this is the one that's going to go on tour with us. Now, did you rent the snake or did you buy the snake? No, her right? name is Angel. Uh -huh. And uh, she's really, I mean, you know, unless she kills me, she's a wonderful little guy. No, you don't, no, that's, that's, no, no. <laughs> you don't care for snakes, do you? I don't like snakes. No. You see, yeah, they're uh, really... Yeah. They're very, they're very, very clean. They're actually, they're actually much safer than, uh, than a dog. Yeah, you know? snakes do not. This snake does not bite. It would, it would only strike you if you, uh, you know, if it were 24 hours before or after feeding. When did then it, it would. When did it eat last? <laughs> Excuse me, we this didn't This one check. did eat about two weeks ago. We so, I mean, they, they only eat. Yeah. My, uh, Let me take a break here. We'll come back and talk some more and talk yeah. about the tour and what's going to happen and so forth. Stay where you are. <laughs> Okay, the snake is taking five, <laughs> resting up. Snake is resting up for your opening night tomorrow, and like any performer, it's, it's strange. As long as you've been performing, all mm -hmm. the audiences you've faced around the world, you said, gee, tomorrow's opening night. You get yeah. up tight a little oh, bit I, for I first do, show? you know, because we have a lot of special effects in the show. So what's your theme this year? You've done a lot of bizarre things. Yeah, this is going to be the best of. Yeah. It's going to be like we've taken five shows, and this, was, this is taking it all and squeezing it into one show. So we're using the guillotine again. We're right. using things that were, you know, you know, were, were very strange before, but uh, putting them into a new context and everything. Yeah. And when you first started, it was considered wild, but now people became accustomed to the happening, and it, and that's what it really is—is yeah. is an experience that the that the audience really has to get in and share the whole total type of thing with you. I'd be surprised how many parents of kids that come to see the show, like when we played Lake Tahoe. <coughs> You know, we had a lot, a different audience. Right. And they came to see the thing and they were really entertained. I mean, it's no more dangerous than uh, Sinbad, you know, the sailor. Because it's, right. it's an adventurous show. Alice against a nine-foot cyclops. Alice against, you know, the right. giant spiders. And, well, like and when, they fir when they first started, you know, people, especially the generation gap, you know, the kids see something new and they, they go right for it, you yeah. know, because it's a kick. And so the parents very often say, I don't, I don't understand that. What do you mean, a man named Alice Cooper? Right away, you got that when you first started. You say, well, what do you mean? He's a man. Why, why, is, he, why is he called Alice Cooper? Did you get yeah, that from... Totally, totally from shock value. The right. idea of this, the, in order to get attention, you have to do something that's going to get attention. I figured Lizzie Borden, <laughs> you know. What names, you know, like uh, ba Baby Jane, Alice Cooper. <laughs> why not? Yeah, of course. It was a name that really yeah, sounded like an axe murderer. I didn't realize the other day that the name Led Zeppelin, you know, they always say that word over there. There's an old saying, you know, went over like a Led Zeppelin. Their original title was spelled L-E-A-D. Oh, really? I didn't yeah. know. Yeah, and they, they were going out as, you know, went over like a Led <laughs> Zeppelin, and somebody, their manager, says, take the A out. For some reason, it became L-E-D. And I can never quite figure that, that whole thing out. That's, I, 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 I've never... That's, that's the way they came yeah. with that. How does uh, your dad was a minister? Somebody told me. Yeah, is that true? He is. Or is a minister? Yeah, he is. My dad's got a real good. Um, does he relate to this whole? Uh, yeah, he's got a real good comprehension of what I'm doing. You know, he understands showbiz is showbiz, and that's really all I'm trying to do is the fact of taking rock and roll and making it into uh, burlesque or vaudeville or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but instead of having burlesque music, you have rock and roll music right. as the background. I mean, Doc knows that the, anything that works on stage, anything that works physically and visually on stage must have the music background to make it work. Right. And so that's what we spend like 90% of our time on is, is that. They have to complement each other. Yeah, they have to. Somebody told me you played in Brazil once to how many people and then you, somebody said, well, it wasn't a full house. And I said, well, how many people? And, what, and they said it wasn't a full house. How, what was the we audience? Had, we had 148,000 people indoors. Indoors. And that was about half the audience. I mean, because... Uh, where, where was this? It was at some sort of an industrial... It's a place where they, they do industrial shows, where they bring tractors out. In Rio? Rio de Janeiro? Yeah. yeah in, no, in um, uh, Sao Paulo. Right. Yeah. And I think it was the biggest indoor audience for any rock concert. It was in the Guinness Book of Records. It was the biggest, the biggest one. Well, the last person sitting in the back has got to be... It was like a wheat field. I mean, I looked out there with binoculars, <laughs> and I couldn't... And they didn't have police. They didn't have police out in front. They had machine guns. You know? that, that would deter. I've often thought of yeah, that. Yeah, that <laughs> bothered me a little bit. <laughs> Looked down, I saw these guys, and they were they were they meant it too. You know. Yeah. Says, oh, hello, saw. Mm, machine gun. You ever yeah. been invited to go go back and play at the White House? 
No, I never been very conservative back there. They usually get yeah. you know the more conservative artists and so forth. And I've often wondered why they be nice to see a president you know pull out and say something current and and hip and. Well, that would be not. I'd like to you know I, I play golf and so I would I would play. I don't think. The only reason I don't trust Carter is because he doesn't play golf. <laughs> You've got to have a president who plays golf. <laughs> that huh? bothers me, yeah, because every, every president should play golf. And so, you know, That's your image, John. Yeah, I mean, I would play with Ford because he would play the same handicap, and so, I mean, I would love to go out and play with him, but I, that's what bothers me about Carter. He made a hole-in-one the other day. Did you he know did, the really? The president for Ford made yeah. a, after he's, I think he oh, said he was 64, great. he's been waiting 64 years, and he made a hole-in-one, I think, during the Danny Thomas Oh, that's thing. great. And then I they like put that. the ball up for charity auction or something. That's got to be a great kick. $17 million, right? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody bid, I think, $15,000 and then presented it really? back. And, yeah, and then presented it back to wow. President Ford as a memento, which is kind of nice. Look, I know you're going to do a number for us, then you're going to have to uh, leave. Incidentally, the latest album. You're going to do a, a number from the, the latest show, yeah, right? Yeah, from the new from, show. And the album is called Lace and Whiskey. Does this need any setup before you go over there to well, do it? Well, yeah, I'll tell you what happens. Is I created a new character for this show. It's, his name is Inspector Maurice Escargot. Snail. <laughs> and, and he's like the counterpart of Clouseau. And Inspector I got Clouseau. together with sellers in, in, in Europe, and uh, this character is like Robert Mitchum and Don Knotts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's a real, you know, he's a real idiot. Here's a Total composite. <laughs> yeah. Don Knotts and Robert Mitchum. And so this, this, uh, he's always getting beat up by everybody he meets, you know, and uh, this, is, this is what this. Okay, we're going to take a commercial because I know we got a little change here to make and then I know you have to split after that. First of all, I want to thank you for doing the number here and uh, have a great opening in Anaheim and on the tour. Where do you head after Anaheim? Uh, Vancouver. Great. Yeah, Thanks absolutely. for being here. We'll take a okay, break and we'll be you. right back with probably one of the wildest numbers you've ever seen in our state. Stay where you are.